Welcome back. What is software? Software includes all the programs or applications that basically tell the computer how to operate. Just remember that computers have no inherent intellect. They can only do precisely what they are told to do. It might feel at times as though they have a mind of their own. But this is normally just an error in the instructions it's trying to work through, which causes an unexpected behaviour. We're going to take a look at various types of software. First, we have office applications. Most computers, particularly in an office or work environment, have a version of this. Here we have Microsoft Office. This includes applications such as Word, which is used for creating documents, such as letters and memos. Excel, which is used for creating spreadsheets. These can be used for keeping financial records or inventories. And then there's Outlook, which is used for email, and Publisher, which is used for desktop publishing activities, such as creating posters or flyers. Full Office Suite has a few other, more specialist applications, including access for databases and OneNote for note-taking. Next, we have web browsers. You've probably used at least one of these. A web browser is an application that allows you to view web pages. Remember that in themselves, they're not the internet, but they do allow you to look at one part of the internet, specifically the World Wide Web, or just the web for short. First example here is Google Chrome. Then we've got Internet Explorer, Apple Safari, and Mozilla Firefox. There are many others, such as Microsoft Edge or Opera. Most people just use whichever one their computer came with. My browser of choice is Chrome. Just remember that they are software that allow you to look at web pages. Next category is graphics programs. These programs are used to create and manipulate images or photos. The big commercial player here is Adobe's Photoshop. This is a very powerful piece of software and is used by a lot of big publishing houses when creating magazines, etc. A competitor to Photoshop is GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's completely free and open source, and what this means in a later lecture. At the other end of the spectrum is Paint by Microsoft. This comes free with Windows, but is only capable of the most basic image manipulation. A popular type of software is gaming. There are big titles such as Battlefield, Call of Duty or FIFA. Or at the other end, there's mobile games for smartphones, including titles such as Candy Crush Saga. Can you think of any other software that falls into the categories that I haven't mentioned? How about media players? iTunes, Windows Media Player, Spotify and VLC are examples in this category. Or how about calculator apps? Have you done a quick calculation using the calculator app on your smartphone? Most phones have calculator apps now. Perhaps you use your phone as an alarm clock. Well, this is another example of a piece of software. Let's look now at different internet technologies. The technologies we're going to look at are still heavily reliant on software. Actually, they only consist of software. Let's look at software used on the web. First, we have Google Search. When you enter your search term and click the search button, Google software goes to work to return the results that it found related to what you entered. Next, we have Twitter. Twitter's software allows you to post short messages and socially interact with other users. Facebook is similar. It's a social media platform. It allows you to socially interact with other users on the platform. So again, the software allows you to post messages, photos and videos. My last example in this category is Instagram. This is similar to Facebook and Twitter, but with a stronger focus on posting and commenting on pictures. Next category is email. Email is a way of sending messages, much like postal letters. You write out your message, enter the unique address of the recipient and send it through the internet for, for the recipient to read. Examples of software in this category are Gmail, Outlook and Yahoo. With email, there are two elements to the software. The first is the software you use to view and compose the messages. This can either be software on your phone or computer, or it can be software on the internet that you use through your web browser. The other element to the software is a system that moves the messages through the internet to its intended recipient. Microsoft Skype, Google Hangouts, Apple FaceTime and Facebook Messenger are all types of video chat and instant messenger, IM for short. 
They allow you to either chat by text message in real time or to chat face to face with each other. Real time just means it's a live conversation, so the person was right next to you responding instantly to the conversation. Email, for example, isn't real time. There can be a delay between a message being sent and when it's finally read by the recipient. Just note that you can't chat cross platform with these apps. So you can't use Skype to chat to somebody using FaceTime, for example. You both need to be using the same software. Can you think of any other examples of internet technologies? Here are a couple that I thought of. News groups, which aren't as popular as they once were. Think of them as a public notice board. People post messages to a group, which can then be replied to. Or there's file transfer. If you've downloaded any files from the internet before, then you've used specific software, probably built into your web browser to do this. In this video, we've defined what software is and had a few watching. See you in the next video.